In this video, I want to show you how you can use parameters to dynamically switch your data sources in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together and also why you should think about using this in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the what if parameters is a feature in Power BI, which allows you to give your users the ability to dynamically adjust values in your report. And we actually already covered this in a different video. So check it out if you want to know the basics of what if parameters. In this video, we're going to look at how to parameterize your report sources so you can easily switch between different data sources. So first, I want to show you the SharePoint site that I set up for demo purposes. And in this SharePoint site, I have a folder here called Pipelines. And in this folder, I have three different folders, Dev, Tests, and Production. Each of them have the exact same file so it's a employees.csv. And if you open the file itself, you will notice that the files will have the exact same setup here. So it will have the same workspace name. It will have the same number of columns. And the only thing different between these files are the data within them. It's a typical deployment style you see within the industry. And what it does is it ensures sensitive data is protected during the development or testing stages of deployments without hindering them. So what we want to do is we want to pull this data in our dev folder into our Power BI report to start with. So let's start by doing that. So let's first copy the root URL of our SharePoint site. Let's go to a blank Power BI report here, get data, hit more. We need to get data from a SharePoint folder here connect. Here we'll paste the site URL. We simply hit OK from here. This will bring up all the files available in my SharePoint site. We need to look for the specific one, which I can see is one of these at the bottom. So we're gonna simply transform data, which will open up the Power Query window. So if we expand the folder path, we will know which one we need. We need this one in line 13 because it says the employees file in the dev folder. So from here, we simply select the binary to expand it. Then let's do a couple of transformations to clean this up. So let's promote the first row as headers, transform, and let's detect data type for all of them. So it changes those into numbers. We'll name the query employees as well. And then we simply hit close and apply to load this into our data model. So from here, you can start creating visuals like this. We'll just put it in a table as an example. You can start working on the model itself, creating relationships, or even publishing this report into the service. So what we want is to dynamically set the source of data so that at an instant, we can change the visuals to use the tests or production data. Now, this is just a demo, so the steps are pretty simplistic, but in reality, there will be a lot more steps that you simply don't want to keep recreating, such as calculations or visuals, every time you want to switch data sources. The first thing that we need to do is to go back to the Power Query editor here and analyze the steps that we've done. So you can see if we go to the source step, here. The source step simply gives us all the files within the SharePoint site. Then the second one, the navigation. If you look at the formula bar here, it simply defines the path where the CSV file is. So here, it's, here it says that the folder path for the file is coming from this folder, the dev folder. 
Then the rest of these steps like imported CSV or promoted headers or change type are simply transformation steps to the data. So because all the files that we need are all in the same place in the same SharePoint site, we don't really need to do anything in this source step. And also because we know that the files on each of these folders will be the exact same format, we want them to all be transformed the same way. So we don't actually need to do anything on any of these transform steps. The step that we need to parameterize is the navigation step. So this folder path parameter here and the text within this folder path is what we need to customize. So if you look at what it is at the moment, you'll see that uh, at the end of this query, it just gives us a bunch of test names and a bunch of test salary. Now, if we go back to the navigation and change the source to, let's say production, and I know that the folder's name is this, so, so that's how I managed to just change it. If you hit enter, you'll see it just loads for a second. But if you now go back to the end of this query, it will now give us actual values. So this is production data with real names and real salaries. So what we did is we manually updated the folder path in this navigation step. Now we need to update this dynamically using a parameter. So let's do that. Let's try to create a new parameter. You can do it by simply right clicking on the queries here and clicking a new parameter, or you can go under home, manage parameters and new parameter. We can name this new parameter file source. We can leave the description blank, leave this one as required. The type, it doesn't really matter. We just set it as text because we know it will need to be text. Suggested values, um, instead of any value, we want this to be a list of values. So we just want when we use the parameter to just select from a list of sources. So we know that we have one called tests, one, well actually no, there's a, two tests. The first one is dev, and then the third folder is called production, like this. So once that's done, we simply set the default value. So we just want it to be dev, and the current value as dev. So now that's your parameter pretty much set up. If you hit OK, you will see that the parameter is here and you can choose between all these three different values that we've created. Then what we need to do is simply go back to our employees query here, go back to the navigation step. And here is where we will need to parameterize this part of the string because everything else needs to stay the same or it can stay the same. So you'll have the roots URL, you'll have where it is. We know that all of them are in the pipelines folder. The only thing that we need to change is this bit in the middle. So let's do that. So we'll simply go and, well, let's delete this one. We'll use an ampersand to combine this with other parts. So the first part is the file source, another ampersand, and then we need to close it with the forward slash like this. And you will see that should work. So it will now give us, so now you'll see from the Power Query editor that if we go to the change type, it will simply show us dev because that's what we have selected here in our parameter. But now if you change this current value into test or production, the result of this query will also change. So if we change it to test, for example, and let's go back to the query, you'll see that it gives us the value for the test folder. And then lastly, if we change it to production, go back to the employees, you'll see it gives us the production data set. So let's put this back to dev like this and hit close and apply. So here's the report that we have set up. We now have a parameter which you can't see, but at the moment you have this one table employee table, which is just showing us dev data. So if you want to switch to another data source like test or production, you simply go to home, transform data, edit parameters, 
then choose the file source that you want to change to. So let's say we want to see production data instead. If you hit OK, hit apply changes and wait for a bit. You'll see that we'll now use the data that we have in the production folder. So this is simply one instance that you could do to swap your data sources using the parameters. If your data source is in SQL Server or somewhere else, you need to look for parameterizing their paths or URLs and hook it up to a parameter in order to easily switch between your sources. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use parameters to dynamically switch your data sources in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.